Real quick, just wanted to say a few things at the start of this video, uh, because as I'm editing the footage that I have from the day that Tim was up here, uh, I'm realizing I'm not super happy with the quality. Uh, it was a real last minute unplanned shoot. Tim just happened to be in the area. He's from Long Island, which is about an hour and a half, two hours away from me. It was real last minute when he, when he hit me up saying he was around. I wasn't gonna go grabbing all my different camera gear and doing a full blown shoot because it's just too time consuming and we didn't, we were running out of daylight. So I just grabbed my GoPro, which does fine for the most part, but it, in terms of like those real nice eye candy shots, as I like to call them, it doesn't always deliver the results that you would want, especially if the lighting's not perfect. So, but anyways, we, I may do with what we had. Uh, I'm gonna obviously post this anyways, because it's one of my personal favorite Mark ones, purely because of how thorough the build is. Hope you guys enjoy it for what it is you know again sorry that it's not more visually pleasing but we may do with what we could so enjoy when you wake up one morning and you realize all groggy and misty eyed that you're flying right through the sky on a falcon named Jebediah. When you come to, you see right in front of you. Again, start from the beginning. Jebediah's All right, the so uh, to really start from the beginning, we gotta go back to uh, to a Mark IV R32 I owned. A blue one to be exact. Single owner. Purchased that car in Florida. It's really nice, but I owed money on it, and uh, thinking that the, the way to be an adult was to sell it pay off my loan and do the right thing. Let me tell you kids. It was not the right thing. It was not the <laughs> right thing. I mean, all things considered, I didn't need the car. I could always get another one. I probably will get another one, but at the time that's what happened. So I sold the car, I had six grand left over, and I said, what? what's something fun? Something, you know, Volkswagen, because I'm an idiot, like we all are. Yeah. Um, and then I said, you know, we get one of those rabbit pickup trucks. And I started looking and I was asking and trying to find it all over and uh, stumbled upon this one on the Samba. 70,000 original miles. I think you're one of the very few people I know that bought it some off bought a water cooled off of Samba. The Samba, I know. Not Vortex. I know. How <laughs> odd is that? It, it, it seriously worked out. And you know what worked out was that it was an old head. It was like an 85 year old man who was like, hey, uh, this is all I know. I put it on here because I didn't know who wanted it. So I talked on the phone with him for a little bit and basically said, will it make it back to New York? And he went, what? I said, if I fly in and drive it home, will it make it? And it was in Texas, right? It was in Texas. And uh, he basically said, yeah, I think so. It was not a confident answer, but I took the, uh, you know, the 80-something year old man for his, his word and me and my girlfriend bought two plane tickets and uh, we flew down. We drove around the block and said, all right, whatever. It's, it's a piece of shit, but it's the piece of shit I want right now for whatever reason. And uh, we drove it home. It took us three and a half days because the speed limit is, uh, you know, basically 65, 70 out there and the truck wouldn't do over 50. Without starting over yeah, it had the it had the stock one six, right? Stock one six with a four speed, and all I wanted to do was overheat. The AC blew freezing cold. All I wanted to do was overheat, so it was uh, unfortunate, but that was the way it went. So we uh, cruised it back. It took about three days. Nice, that wasn't us. Um, took about three days, and uh, once I got back to New York, I just started the project of getting it up to speed. But then it blew up on you, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so it made it all the way back from Texas without a hitch, problem free. Went down to Ocean City, dicked around in Ocean City for a whole weekend, drove it back, drove it for another three months, and uh, I was just going to a buddy's house, who lives like a mile away, and it started making the, uh, the knock, knock, knock on heaven's door, and uh, it went from <laughs> knock, knock, knock to uh, NYPD, we're breaking down the door. <laughs> Cylinder number one is 
toast, the rod came through the wall, and the, uh, the TDI swap began. Uh, it really technically began the week I bought it because I bought the engine the week I bought the car. Oh, okay. I went, so uh, you knew from the get-go you were He going. was getting a TDI swap. It was 100% getting it. It was just a matter of time of so when. what is the motor? The motor is a 2002 1.9 TDI ALH engine code. Internally, basically stock, minus some ARP head studs. But, uh... So you did the studs? Studs, VNT 17 turbo, a PD-130 gearbox facing uh, intake manifold with a front mount intercooler, two inch piping, uh, 1019 DLC injector nozzles, um, 11 millimeter injection pump from an automatic. So you did a proper... It got, it got everything, including an intake and exhaust, obviously. Um, so what and, kind of power do you think it's making? Well, right now the tune that it has is uh, a Malone Stage 2, which is technically 123 wheel horsepower, 188 wheel torque, if I'm remembering correctly. So it feels pretty good. But I did talk to uh, one of the guys at Malone and told him I'm running a VNT 17. You know, what's that any better so you'll make a few more you know and it'll just do it a little bit uh easier i guess so yeah the torque is through the roof then. oh it's just hard it's ridiculous good torque it's spinning one through four we went with a stage two tune to start because it was like you know i don't know how it's going to be in a mark one and i didn't have the head studs done yet so i was like let me start with the stage two but all the supporting mods are for stage four tune so in reality it could be 153 wheel horsepower, about 270 something wheel torque, from what their website says on that that file. Which is, I think is just kind of unnecessary too, because then that's when you're gonna start breaking shit. Pretty much. So I'm thinking the way it is 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 pretty damn good. Uh, I don't really want to mess with it. If anything, uh, if I could detune it a little bit, I might. <laughs> but for right now, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it. I mean, quick downshift to fourth, and you just. I say it all the time, even though all of my Mark 1s are 8 valve uh, gassers, I say it all the time when people ask what the best swap is, TDI. It is hands down the best swap I've ever driven. It's most for, for street use. It's it's kind of funny because it's no race car, but uh... Dude, I mean, how, like how, how great is that merge oh, power though? Like, I mean, this is third and you just... When he was buying all the parts for this thing, it was great to watch someone else spend all the money you wish you could spend. <laughs> because everything he bought was like, just, it was just all nice stuff. And he wasn't, he wasn't skipping, he was trying to, he wasn't cutting corners or pinching pennies. He was doing it right and getting to watch, Dude, getting to watch all the parts come in every, and like once a week, just a, another parts picture was great. There was very few things I cut corners on. And uh, the reason being is I planned the daily drive this. This was supposed to be a daily driver. It just turned out to be, it had taken so long, I was given a car by a family member. Hey, here, we don't need this anymore. Take it as your daily. And it was like, oh, all right, cool. Because I was, I was borrowing my girlfriend's car, which, thank you. Uh, for uh, <laughs> Special shout out. Yeah, special <laughs> shout out to Jess. I say it all the time, you gotta have a daily. Like, you gotta have a backup car if you want a daily one. Yeah, I, I mean, I honestly think that in the current setup that this is, as long as nothing drastic went wrong, you really could daily the thing. It's, oh, you could, no, no, don't. Very drivable. And I, yeah. I never say that in the sense that you can't daily them. It's but, just like, given the age of them, you need to be prepared exactly. to, to park it for a week and yeah. drive something yeah. else. I mean, at this point, uh, knock on wood, I've gone through the thing. Yep. Suspension, you know. Well, the, the fact that Madness was this past weekend. Yes. Which you guys will see that video in a couple of weeks. I'm in no <laughs> rush to do that. But Madness was just this past weekend. We had temperatures of 100 to 100, 100 to 110 degrees. Like, uh, uh, what, was it, what was the humidity? The humidity was through the roof, too. Uh, somebody said it was 100 because you're in that valley there. And it's right. just... Through New York City, through Long Island, and up through the rolling hills of PA, uh, 100, 100 to 10 degree weather, and uh, not a single hiccup, right? No, no, I mean, 
the only Boy, thing five hour drive basically it was a five hour drive but you know that he's got those wags and a beacon of voice that sings among many other powerful things he's the king of the falcons then you think about it with every single brain cell that has gotta be some kind of magic spell you start feeling deceived you stand up with your lungs swelled and your chest heaves sand king Yeah, basically, I, I did the whole truck in my driveway, uh, the best that I could. We have a dead end next to my house, and everything was done in the dead end or in the driveway. It was done to the best of my ability, and then at that point, once I had it running and driving, I took it to my job, I work at a dealership, and I did as much as I could do there without them being like, all right, get this thing the fuck out. And then I took it over to my friend's shop, uh, E-Squared Motorsports in Freeport, New York, and uh, I gave him a little bit of a laundry list and said, listen, I don't have time, a place to do it. Please, you know, get this shit done so for what me. So what do you tell you got the roll pan? They did a roll pan for me, painted it up, and did everything. They did a GTI front balance. Uh, they basically welded the parts of the exhaust. I'm not a welder nor a painter, so <laughs> they did that. Uh, they did a couple, <coughs> a couple different things, like the front K-bar needed to be cut and modified to fit. Uh, the sway bar, the transmission. Yeah, with the transmission. So they did a lot of different things. You know, they they really dialed it in for me, which was absolutely appreciated because I don't have the time. Yep. They barely had the time, but they fit it in, so it, it made a big difference. So thank you to Evan and Dylan over at E2. Definitely check them out. Uh, E2 Motorsports is their Instagram. If you want the full effect, by the way, while you're watching this, go go to the gas station and soak a rag in diesel <laughs> and just hold it like, like just, right just, here. Yeah, like close. Just rub it on, rub it on your neck. Take, take, uh, take some diesel and pat it on your neck. 